Hello and welcome to Norwood News. Today is Friday, June 4th, and I'm your host, Krista McDonald. It is great to have you with us as we end another week here in Norwood. Every year, the Orient Lodge sponsors the annual Norwood Schools Teacher of the Year event. The five finalists this year include Elizabeth Robin, Kimberly Beaudet, Sterling Blonder, Patricia Kelleher, and Jennifer Hartnett. This event is always a special time to recognize the hard work that our educators put in on a daily basis. Yes, so my name is Gary Cullis. I'm the co-chair of the Teacher of the Year Award sponsored by Orient Lodge, a Freemason group located in downtown Norwood. Freemasonry is one of the oldest fraternities uh, in existence. And uh, what we annually do is support many community events. At this time of year, it's the Teacher of the Year or toy that we're supporting. And that event, Orient Lodge has been uh, sponsoring for the past 15 years. This year, especially with the pandemic, teachers had to be creative to figure out how to reach out to the students and, and still teach them. And, and no doubt it was quite challenging. But we received 29 applications, 29 nominees that were submitted by colleagues, parents, and even students. What we do with those 29 uh, nominees is carefully evaluate uh, on a criteria of um, what they've done and we select five finalists. Those five finalists have been released on social media over the past week's time and today we are going to be announcing the winner. Each of the five finalists will receive a hundred dollar gift card for, to one bistro and the winner is going to receive a thousand dollar cash gift from Orient Lodge as well as a matching thousand dollars to their respective school. There are many other community events at Norwood that Orient Lodge does uh, over the course of the year, but this is one of our most important, and we're very pleased to be able to help the teachers and recognize their hard work. In light of the event not being held in person, NCM is pleased to have the exclusive announcement of the 2021 Teacher of the Year. We'll go to Teresa Drummy, last year's Teacher of the Year, for the official announcement. Hello, I'm Teresa Drummy, the 612 English Department Chair. I am also the 2020 Teacher of the Year. I'd like to thank the Orient Lodge of Masons for sponsoring this wonderful annual program, recognizing and celebrating the accomplishments of our teachers. This year, more than any year, we need this program. The last 15 months have been challenging, to say the least. I've been inspired by the hard work, commitment, grit, and grace of our teachers, staff, students, and families. What seemed impossible became possible. But not just that, it became rewarding and successful. It is now my honor to announce this year's winner. Representing the Remote Learning Academy and F.A. Cleveland Elementary School, the 2021 Norwood Teacher of the Year is Patricia Kelleher. Congratulations and thank you for all you do for the Norwood Learning Community. Congratulations, Patricia, so well-deserved. Norwood has put another Memorial Day in the books. Veterans agent Ted Mulvihill recaps the event. Memorial Day observances in Norwood 2021 were a success to the extent that we recognized and remembered and respected the service of those fallen men and women from our town who made the ultimate sacrifice on behalf of our freedoms. Um, was I thrilled that it was virtual? No, I was not. Uh, it was heartbreaking to me, again, to not be able to proclaim in a very public venue uh, how much we appreciate and respect and honor those men and women who served. But we did it virtually, we did it on, uh, out of an abundance of caution and for the public safety. Uh, but I can promise you this, uh, next year we will really turn, up, turn it up a notch and uh, we want everyone to come out. I mean, I want a thousand people here. So yeah, uh, it was a success. And of course, special thanks to Norwood Community Media for all their hard work in promoting the event. Thank you. And what would be Memorial Day without the Colonial Boys? Many residents came out to see them marching up the streets of Norwood.
Restaurant Week is kicking off on Monday, June 7th in Norwood, and several restaurants are participating. You will be able to choose from a specific menu or discounted prices on food and beverage. To see the complete list of restaurants participating, please visit the Neponset River Regional Chamber's website at www.nrrchamber.com. We'll be right back with coverage of the annual Senior Walk after this break. Welcome back. The Senior Walk tradition continued this year where all the NHS high school seniors visited their elementary schools for one last walk around the building. This senior class is incredibly special to me because this was my first classroom here at the Cleveland School. They were my first class of fifth graders. Um, I grew with them. They were just an amazing group of students and we've, I've kept in touch with several of them as the years have gone on and I'm just so proud of the people that they've become. Uh, great seeing all the teachers I had in the past, uh, great seeing the kids supporting us and uh, uh, it really shows how long, how far we came as individuals and like we, you know, it's crazy how long ago we were just walking the same hallway in, uh, in the school and it's a really great, great event to be at. And, um, uh, nice thing. We just realized like collectively as a group of people who went here that it's been seven years since we left and it definitely does not feel like it but I also feel like it's been like 20 so <laughs> it's it's definitely it, it goes by super quickly but also like you can kind of stop and feel it as it happens. I'd say. Hi there not that I need to introduce myself I'm hoping my seniors all still remember Mrs. Thornton at Prescott this is such a great day for all of the kids here and for myself and the staff to see our seniors walk through this school one last time. We're so proud of all of you. You are amazing kids. It's a wonderful day here for us, and we wish you all the best that the future has to hold for all of you. You're a great bunch of kids, and good luck. The Senior Center is excited to announce some upcoming programs and updates to the Senior Center. Hi everybody, it's Carrie McCarthy from the Norwood Senior Center, and I'm here today to let you know that we are back um, at 100% capacity here at the Senior Center. You're in the cafe, which is now open. We will be serving coffee and Danish and breakfast goods, as well as some snacks throughout the day. Everything will be individually wrapped, so you don't need to worry about um, any type of exposure to the food. Our exercise classes are back at full capacity, so you do not need to call and register for classes anymore. We have plenty of space in that room, so the social distancing will still be um, <clears throat> available. Our lunch program is ending on June 11th with our end of the year cookout. Everything will continue to be grab and go for the rest of the school year. And then in July, we'll start up our lunch program again. Um, just a few um, activities I wanna let you know about. Um, as I mentioned, the July 11th, we are having our end of the year cookout. So please um, call and register for that. The cost is $5. On June 10th, Thursday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. DA Mike Morrissey is um, sponsoring a community shredding event here at the Senior Center. So feel free to um, bring anything that you need um, shredded. And our trips are back. So um, we will get all that information out in the newsletter, but our trips are back with box tours. Um, and it's important to note that they will require a vaccine for you to sign up for their trips. Um, so nobody can um, sign up for the trip unless you are vaccinated for their trips. They are a private organization, so they have the right to do that. Other than that, we are um, <clears throat> encouraging you to come to the Senior Center. If you are vaccinated, you do not have to wear a mask, but again, it's up to your comfort level, whatever you choose. Um, we're just excited to have you back. Thank you. As the Senior Center returns to full operations, Kerry was excited to show NCM their newest service, a van that will be available to transport Nord residents to out-of-town medical appointments. This is our new senior medical van. This was approved by town meeting, and now we have um, available transportation to out-of-town medical appointments. 
It is available Monday through Thursday. And as of now, we're going to the surrounding communities of Walpole, Westwood, Dedham, Needham, Newton, and Foxborough. So if you need a ride, please give us a call at the Senior Center. This is for 60 and older. Just give us a call and um, the more notice we have, the more availability there will be for you to um, have a ride. So just give us a call and we'll schedule your ride. Now we toss it over to Miles Kidd in studio to find out what is happening this week around the Nord School District. Hi guys, I'm Miles Kidd and let's take a look at some activities happening in our Nord schools this week. At the Coakley Middle School, 7th grade students helped produce a video that was shown during the CMS Grade 5 Open House event on Facebook Live. The students provided a tour of the school and they can't wait to see their new 6th graders in September. Also at CMS, here are the students with their bacteria anti antibiotic petri dishes. In class, they made observations of what occurred in their petri dishes, measuring how effective the antibiotic was against bacteria they played it in last Friday's class. Great science happening at, at CMS. Nord Police Chief Bill Brooks recently posted this great picture that was taken at the Balch School. Officer Rooney is having just as much fun as the students on the new Balch playground. It's great to see the officers interacting with the children all around town. At the Cleveland School, thanks to the PTO, students were enthralled by speed painter Rob Surratt's amazing hero art present presentation. The master fine artist for Disney, Star Wars, and DC Comics uses performance art as a vehicle for inspiring students to believe in themselves and their dreams. At the Prescott School, the third grade students performed an, an end of the year violin concert for their office staff. Let's take a look. Nice job students and thanks for the concert. At the Little Mustangs, the preschoolers are taking a dive in the deep blue sea. A few of the classrooms have been diving into learning about ocean animals this week. From making awesome octopi to using Cheerios to make beautiful seahorses, the preschoolers are proud of their creations. The students had a fun time playing with the pretend ocean animals and learning the names of the animals by playing ocean bingo. They then took to the seas by playing the waves game and learned positional concepts by deciding if they were on or under the waves. The students learned that making waves can be so much fun. Well, that's it for school news. There's something interesting happening in our classrooms and schools every day, and thanks to the educators who share the news with us. Now let's send it over to Brian Dunn with the latest in spring sports. Hello there, and welcome into the sports update for this week. My name is Brian Dunn. This week, we head to the field for youth sports, as Tuesday night was the first of two youth softball town championships. The Wildcats came away as your grades 3 through 5 tower champions with a 6 to 5 win over the Cheetahs and in an absolute thriller. The Huskies battled back in the late stages to take on the 6 to 8 grade town championship ground, led by this strike from Brady Dalton. Is the batter you want in this situation? 6 to 4, there's a ball. Oh, and it goes over. Brady Dalton rounding second. Brady Dalton rounding third. Oh, they're going to send her all the way in. Oh, and a grand slam for Brady Dalton. Unbelievable. Wow. That would be the rally that eventually would give the Huskies the lead and propel them to a win. Excellent job, Huskies. A quick sports recap this week. Wednesday was senior night action for the girls across team against Norton, and they pick up a well-earned W against the Lancers 12-8. Send it over to Thursday, where volleyball held their senior day against the same opponent, the Norton Lancers. And once again, a solid result for the Mustangs, a straight set sweep to end their home regular season campaign. We'll wait to see about the tournament qualification for the volleyball team. Other scores included wins in wrestling, baseball, and boys tennis. A solid week for the Mustangs all around, and let me say to wrap up this week to the class of 2021, thank you. It has been an unbelievable two years with everything that has gone on. You can be proud of yourselves for how you handle an unprecedented situation, and I wish you all the best of luck in your future endeavors. We'll be back with sports next week, so stay tuned on social media for updates. Kristen, back to you. Thanks, Brian. In government, the planning board held a series of public hearings Tuesday night. These interactive meetings welcome residents for discussion with the board. Residents shared thoughtful concerns with proposed zoning bylaw amendments and proposed town meeting articles. As town meeting approaches, board clerk Ernie Pachikowski shares an important reminder to all taxpayers. Zoning does not go backwards. So I want people to understand that if this passes town meeting, this is going forward. 
not backwards. So what is there today is still there. We're not going to make a building that is in business today, you know, change its, its setbacks, change its uh, set, um, frontage, change its, you know, putting a sidewalk in. This is only for going forward with new redevelopment or development. Before adjournment, the board voted to recommend five articles for special town meeting with one article postponed indefinitely. The Finance Commission met Tuesday night in preparation of special town meeting. The group reviewed spending requests from various town departments. Five budget articles were approved and will reappear on town meeting floor for a vote. Special town meeting begins June 14th. The zoning board also met that evening. The board voted to continue the Boston Providence Highway case in July. A special permit was approved for residents on Garfield Avenue. The board will resume in-person meetings on July 6th. This week, the Norwood Library hosted another edition of their sustainability series. This event was led by leaders of the Trails Advisory Committee, who gave a presentation of who they are and how the public can get involved with keeping Norwood's trails healthy and thriving. To watch the full presentation, you can watch it on demand at nordcommunitymedia.org. The last meeting of Wednesday was the Conservation Commission. Public hearings included a request for an in-ground pool project to a single-family home, including a patio, and a request for applicability for boat and construction. Mark Negron joined the commission to discuss the Ending Park Community Food Forest project. After some discussion, it was determined that the project's vision may step outside the commission's purview, and Negron was encouraged to bring more information back to the next meeting. Other business included Holly Jones's conservation agents report, the Conservation Commission will meet again in a few weeks. And for complete government coverage, tune into the NCM Government Channel or watch on demand at norwoodcommunitymedia.org. Stay tuned after this break for more town news. Welcome back. If you have been to any of the playgrounds around town, you may have noticed a new blue swing installed. Recreation Superintendent Travis Farley gives us more information. Hi Nora, Travis Farley here at Father Max Playground. You might see some of these great new additions to our playground. They're actually ADA accessible swings. Uh, we've actually, we're able to put these up at a handful of playgrounds uh, this spring for all of our re residents. We're really making an effort to be more inclusive as a department uh, and more accessible. For playgrounds, for all of our residents, um, we actually were able to buy these through a partnership with the planning department through the FY20 Municipal ADA Improvement Grant Program. Uh, due to the pandemic, we were actually not able to get these up right away, uh, but a huge shout out to the DPW for helping us do the install. Um, so thank you very much. We hope you take advantage of some of these, uh, some of these new swings this summer, Nord, so enjoy. Nord Recreation offers pickleball at the Savage Courts on Wednesdays and Thursdays, instructed by Mike Regan. NCM caught up with Mike, who gave us some background on the game of pickleball. Well, let's see. Pickleball, I'll give you uh, the uh, Reader's Digest version, the abbreviated version. Uh, pickleball started in 1965 in a place uh, called Bainbridge, New York. It was an island that was started by three dads who had come home from playing golf one day and their children were bored. So one of the dads went outside and said, well, let's see, we have a net, okay, it's a... Um, it's a bad mitten net, so let's lower it. We, they lowered it, and then they went into their, their wood shed and they made their, 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 um, uh, their tool shed, and they found some wood, they made paddles. So they made paddles, then they found an old wiffle ball, and they said, well, let's go, we're gonna play a game. We didn't even have a name for it. But that was in 1965, the three dads started it, uh, and that's how Pickleball was formed. The name Pickles, sometimes referred to, uh, sometimes thought of as the name of the, uh, one, of the one of the founder's dogs, is really just speculation at this point. So we don't really know how that name came about. It's an easy to learn sport. Uh, it's great for fitness. Uh, it's, um, it's a game that's very social. You can have a blast doing it. Uh, a lot of tennis players who were um, either injured or just have gotten uh, 
uh, the wear and tear from the tennis uh, have come to uh, started to play pickleball uh, and it's also uh, readily available in most towns where they'll have a tennis court that they convert to pickleball keeping the same nets but making you're drawing the lines on the tennis court uh, so if you look for pickleball courts you typically can find them if not your town a neighboring town NCM met up with the Recreation Department last week to challenge them to a game of pickleball. And let's just say there will be a rematch. Let's go take a look. How are you feeling, Christina? I'm feeling real strong. Yeah? Strong, yeah. I ate my Wheaties this morning, I'm ready. Please don't hit me, Katie. Please don't hit me. Game face, game face. How are you feeling? Can't wait. Katie so going upset. down? Katie's going down, down, down. She doesn't even know what's coming. Yes. yes. Much easier. Okay. They make a mistake if they don't have it. Yeah! Oh! Oh! Get that! Oh my god! Man! Oh my god! Look at the bodies everywhere! This is not how the sport is This is not how the sport is played. Somebody call an ambulance. Yeah, I don't know who got it. Invert. There we go. Jesus! Nice, nice, good. Hey, uh, we're gonna have instead of two people up, we're gonna have one person up and one person back, you know, in case the front person misses it, the back person there for uh, defense. But I gotta get back to you. Gotta be better. Okay, you got it. Back, back. Oh! Megan! Okay, what happened there? <laughs> okay. Great game out here at the Savage Pickleball Courts. Uh, they were a good team. They were really good, but we had to beat them. So what do you think, how it went? Yeah, we want to say thank you to our competitors, but you know, we just brought it. We brought the A game. Maybe next time they'll have matching uniforms, so he'll bring out the best of them. Now, did anyone sustain any injury out on the field? <laughs> yes, we did. Yes. Um, we would like to report that NCM's Megan left us welts here, here, and I may have broken my back. <laughs> you know, when you're hired, she comes with a warning label. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, good luck, Megan. We'll see you next time. Great game. Thank you to Mike for teaching and coaching us. Yes, my yeah. pleasure, my pleasure. I told you guys it was easy to learn. Look, at you played one time, you're already having a blast. All right, yeah, we'll, really we'll see you at the rematch. But it's not a rematch because we're the champs. Yeah, yeah. That's so much Didn't sport. we lose? <laughs> I think our NHS guidance crew is going to get in on that next match. Well, that's all for Norwood News. To stay up to date with Norwood Community Media, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll be back next week, and until then, have a great weekend.